Hi YouTube, Miles from Nexus Core here. Welcome I am back. bringing you... Yeah, because they skipped immediately from one deck profile to the next. Bringing you my, <coughs> excuse me, Dragon World deck profile. How uh, expensive is this deck, Miles? It costs money. Cool. How much? A lot! <laughs> Why don't you tell them how much your buddy costs? Like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. Don't over, don't undersell it, Miles. <laughs> this is a DD or Gancho Dragon. Um, if you haven't seen my Katana World deck profile, uh, or if that hasn't gone up yet. Or the anime. What or the anime. What is and deities, by the way? What do you mean? We have uh, Dragon, uh, Deity, Deity Dragon Tribe. Yeah. We have fucking Electro Deities. Yeah. Uh, fucking... Uh, Deity Yankee. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's what Godpunks used to be called. Ah. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, so basically, when this card's your buddy, you can use um, Dragons of All Worlds. Uh, I kind of, like, expand on what that means in my Katana World deck profile, but the TLDR is that you can basically use any Garga. You can use so Jiraiya in so that. It's yeah. World. You don't want to, but you can. It's Garga World. It's Gar. This is Garga World, everybody. Eventually, it's Garga. I was gonna make a deck that's all Garga. Yeah, it's Garga World with the Dragon World engine. Stay tuned for a Dungeon Garga deck. Uh, Dungeons maybe. And Dragons. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Dungeons and Deity Dragon Tribe. No, Dungeons and Dragons is better. Anyway, so I run four of this buddy, uh, Deity Gancho Dragon. Yeah, you should for everybody. Yes. Um, it is, it. to call it, it's pay one gauge and put the top card of the deck in the soul, generic call cost for these DDTs. It's a 10-3-5 size 2. Um, the new thing of it, though, is that it has Deity G Evo, which is similar to G Evo, except at the beginning of its, at, at the end of its battle, you draw a card and then G Evo. So, if you have nothing in hand, you can declare the activation of your G Evo, draw, and if you potentially top deck a target, you can go into that. Um, also, Deity G Evo counts as G Evo um, in all instances. So, if you have like another monster that's like, if this card enters by G Evo, but it entered by Deity G Evo, it entered by G Evo. If it says you need a soul with G Evo, and you have the soul with Deity G Evo, you have a soul with G Evo. Easy. It can be used in all worlds. It's the worldless and it's the whole drag on ruling. Um, and its other skill that I love is that when it's in the soul of a monster on your field, you can pay one, it's counter on your turn, pay a gauge, or no, sorry, pay its call cost, call it from the soul. So you can kind of loop it around by doing like attack with it, DDG Evo, go into a different card, this attack with that, favorite, like, call it from the soul, attack. DDG Evo, unfortunately, can only be used once per turn though, so you can't keep looping it over in, in that regard, but you can use switch mode and um, the new worldless switch mode, so you can like keep looping stuff around. And also it's not, while DDG Evo is once per turn, the calling it from the soul is not, so keep that in mind. It can be a real game changer. It's also got move, penetrate, and soul guard, and that penetrate with three crit can be really harmful. Um, here's the finisher of the deck, Gargantua Dragon Raging Mode. It is a 12-2-6. Um, when it enters by G Evo for this turn, it gains Quadruple Attack. Um, that's already cool. Wow, that's 8 damage if it lands. Um, but even better, when it enters the field, if the number of different Dragods in your drop zone is 3, it gains a crit. If the number of different dragons in your drop zone is at least five, it also gains the ability in which your opponent cannot counter when this card is battling. So that means that for all four attacks this card is making, each with three crit, your opponent cannot do anything. They cannot nullify, they cannot cast any kind of like life gaining counters, they just cannot react to this card. Once this card hits the field, if you have that pretty easy five drag odd drop, that's game. Um, there's also a way to boost up to four crit, but like, it's just, also, it's not really needed, um, and it's not super necessary. It's not like the win con. It's not a good lean engine, you know? Um, it's also got penetrate and soul guard, so the penetrate is even better. I, that was a joke about the lean engine. Competent buddy fight players probably wouldn't understand it. It's like, um, it's like talking to yourself. Our big brains are too big. Anyway. 
Here's Galaxy Braver Gargantua Quasar. This is a um, Star Dragon World Garga. Basically, so it's a dragon. So because my buddy is Deity Gargantua, I can use this card. That's how it works. There you go. Um, when it enters the field by Jeevo, check the top four cards of your deck, add one to hand, and then stack the other three on top. Cool. Whatever. Resources. Yay. But its other skills counter, drop the top card of your deck, and if it's a monster, add it to hand, and for this turn, this card gains penetrate and triple attack. You can only use it during the uh, during your attack phase, but um, that's the point, because you use it offensively. So, when you're checking the top four, and you're like, ooh, I'm torn between this card and this card, if one's a monster, just do both. So you effectively get a plus two off of it. Uh, and then it has move and soul guard. Um, so, Neat card, great for the offensive. It's a 10-3-7. It's awesome. Um, it's kind of just like a weaker but easier to use raging mode. Uh, so you kind of use it to set up a lot of your plays. Uh, then I run two combat deity great hero dragon Gargantua Kaiser. This is the Legend World promo for Gargantua. Um, its ability is, uh, first off, all items on your field cannot be destroyed uh, by your opponent's card effects. Yes. Uh, when this card enters the field, you may equip up to one item from your deck by paying its equip cost. Then if it entered by G Evo, this card and the item both gain 30,000 power and 2 crit. This is your counter to max dragons. This is how you kill them. Uh, move, double attack, and soul guard also. You can deal so much damage just with this card and an item. So that's awesome. And it's only going to get better with the new item we have coming in a few months. Then we run. Mulan? Then we run one. True. Then we run one deity against all Gargantua Dragon Kaisen. Ka what is it called? Eisen Vector. Eisen Vector. The yeah. Shadow Dragon. One? Nope. Or that one's Phantom. Uh, it is a ten three ten. So this is um one of the beefiest boys. Uh, and its skill is counteract during your turn. You can uh, during this card's battle, whether it's attacked or being attacked, whether it is attacking or being attacked, you may discard one card. If you do, it gains 10k power and 10k defense for the turn. However, if you have a soul with G Evo, then it gains 20k, 20k additionally. So if you do that, it gains 30k, 30k. That's awesome. It also has move, double attack, and the most important thing, counterattack. So you turn your nice offense and your nice defense into a great offense. Um, I just really like the card. It's also a solid max dragon counter. Um, and that's important. Uh, I was a bit iffy about this card until I realized that it's one of those cards where it doesn't affect the deck when you don't see it, and it doesn't affect the de and it only helps when you do see it. So like. No reason not to run it. Gargantua Dragon Gatling Mode. Um, when this card enters the field, choose and use one of the following two. However, if you... Following three. Sorry. However... Sorry. Choose and use one of the following three once. However, if it has a soul with Jeevo in its card name... I'm sorry. Did I say when it enters the field? When this card attacks, um, choose and use one of the following three once. Um... However, if you have a card with Jeevo in the soul, you may pick any of the three up to a collective three times. Those are deal one damage to your opponent, destroy a card on your opponent's field, or drop one of your opponent's gauge. So you can do those if you have the soul, uh, if you have the Jeevo soul, you can do those in any kind of combination. Um, so like, you can do burn two damage, destroy a card, destroy two cards, destroy a gauge, or if you use it turn one, just burn all of your opponent's gauge. Personally, I like just the solid burn three, because funnily enough, there is an FTK for that. Um, it is you, FTK, turn one even. The, it's, it's kind of a big combo. You need switch mode. Any other card, any other drag odd, this card, and Deity Gargantua Dragon. The play is, you call your other card, don't attack. Enter battle. G Evo off of switch mode into this card. Attack with it, burn for three. That's also three damage, so that's six damage right there. Your opponent's now at four, cast Deity Gargantua Dragon, kill them. But it's not super likely, but again, running this at one doesn't hurt the deck. Also, the more modes you have, um... 
the 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 easier raging mode is to go off. And again, that's your main finisher, so you want to make sure that that works. Uh, so, but uh, alternatively, I just like to burn my opponent for three because when you burn them, when you burn all their gauge, that does hurt them. But so many decks gain gauge so quickly that it's often not a big setback. Um, so yeah. Good card. And if you see it and you don't need it, like, it's kind of a first turn play. Um, but if you see it and you don't need it, gauge fodder. No big deal. Uh, and it just says soul guard. It's a 7 7, so it's, like, not too good on the offense um, or defense. So, I run one of the uh, Black Dragon. Um, dark. Is it Black Dragon? It, it is, yes. Um, this is the uh, Darkness Dragon World Dragod. It is. I keep reading that as filthy. It is Fickle Dragon of Black Flames, Gargantua Phantom. It has move and soul guard, cool. It is a 936, which I think is the weirdest number ratio in all these drag gods. But um, this is the one where its call cost is actually important. It's pay two gauge and pick a card from your drop zone. Um, Sorry, it's pick a card from your drop zone, add it to the soul of this card, and pay two gauge. You can't pay the two gauge and then throw it in there. It has to all happen at once. Um, but what this does is that you can pick Deity Gargantua Dragon in your drop and add it to the soul. So if for one reason or another you have no Deity Gargantua Dragon in your hand or on your field or in the soul of any card in your field, this card offers an alternative as a nice reset. So if that card's in there, you just add it back to the soul, swing it this card, and then call it back out continue with your G-Evo plays. Easy. Um, it's three gauge to do the entire thing, but you're going to find that this deck does manage gauge pretty easily. Uh, it has Shadow Dive, which is really good for that three crit. It can attack your opponent even if they have a center monster. Um, and when it enters the field, pick a card in your opponent's field and destroy it. Um, if it entered by G-Evo, destroy all cards on your opponent's field. Again, that's not limited to monsters, it's all cards. And your opponent burns one damage. You burn your opponent one damage for each card destroyed. Destroying a card with Soul Guard still counts because it got counted as being destroyed. Um, and you only burn them for the cards destroyed. Just remember that. So it's like, you don't burn for every card on the field, just for whatever card's destroyed. Um, I probably don't even need to say that. It's pretty simple. Uh, but that's just a nice card. I've almost killed just by going into this card by Jeeva. I knocked my opponent from, like, four to one. So I was like, damn, if I could kill one more card, they would have lost. So that's pretty cool. Burning is nice. Uh, now here are your resource gargas. Uh, y'all remember this one. Gargantua Dragon Return Mode. It's just the basic 626. It has got move and soul guard. When it enters the field, you, uh, by any means, mill the top three cards of your deck, then pick up to one, or is it specifically pick? Well, of course it would be pick up to one. And then pick up to one Deity Dragon Tribe Monster and add it to hand. Then if it entered by G Evo, pick a card from those three and add it to hand. So basically if it entered by G Evo, you have to gain... Regardless, you have to pick up to one DDT monster. Then if you enter by Jeevo, you can pick any other card. So nice, like, variety in that. Um, it's a selective draw, too, and it helps to deck them. So if you see a Dragon and you're like, I don't want that in my hand, I don't need it, then you leave it in your drop, and it fuels Raging Mode. Uh, then we run two of this classic guy, Gargantua Dragon Sonic Mode. Um, move, counterattack, and Soul Guard. It is a 7-2-10, so really nice defense. Uh, when it enters the field, you heal to you gain two life. But if it entered by G Evo, you also draw two. Solid first turn resource engine. Um, also, it cannot be bounced, which is becoming progressively more useful. I love this card. Um, but also because of how you kind of dig through the deck now, you never want to run more. Um, you never want to run more of either of these cards, and you, like, just kind of keep it at the 2-2. Please do that for yourself. Um, ratios can make or break this deck. Uh, then onto your size 1s, 3 Prudent Guard Eye. It is a 4-1-1 one, one size 1. You may only call this card once per turn, and that's for good reason, because its skill is pretty good. First off, when a dragon monster on your field, when a dragon monster enters your field, check the top three cards of your deck. Add one, stack the other, add up to one, stack the rest on the bottom of your deck. Cool, gains you nice resources, and you can potentially proc it on your opponent's turn. Oh, I also forgot to mention, in case you don't know, G Evo and Deity G Evo are when this monster 
at the end of this uh, at the end of the battle of this monster so that doesn't mean when it attacks you can only use it it's also when it gets attacked so you can proc this card and deity yeah, Gevo and Gevo on your opponent's turn that's important um because you can kind of like do this card twice if it's on the field your opponent really wanted wants to get rid of this card and i also think that's like inherently useful because it's kind of a distraction from what uh from you taking any damage then also its other skills when it attacks um your opponent or any card anything uh give a crit to a card in your field so like give it to um Raging mode that now has four crit the turn if when you meet its uh, criteria, so yeah, fun card. I like it. He is a good boy. And then we run your original gauge engine and draw Garcat. On call, if you have a DDT on your field, charge one, draw one. Not once per turn, just fun, good resource. Has little zippers. That's really so cool. like a fun yeah. play is like oh, call Prudent, so cool. call Garcat. Garcat skill goes off, charge and draw. Like then you have the the Gargantro Dragon. Oh, well, call. Like oh, that goes away. Then you just activate Gardog, get more resources. So you got two cards in a turn, and then you got your Dragon. Nice. Do you think what's his name? The dude Bucatoli, Bucaroni. Bucciarati. Bucciarati. Bushirati. Yeah, Bushirati, you think he unzipped his dick and left it in the urinal so he can pee for, like... For, um, he doesn't have to pee anymore? It doesn't work that way. It actually does disconnect the body from the rest of it. It oh. doesn't create, like, an empty void, because at one point, he removes his heart, yeah, or he removes his upper now. body from, like, the rest of his body, and he slowly starts to die. Aw. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so it wouldn't work that way. That sucks. Like, that would have been interesting, never having to pee. Remember when Jethro uh, told this card's that cool. that when a, when a soul leaves its body, it can't come back, and then Bucciarati said, fuck that? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that was because Jorno's an ass-pulling Mary Sue. Hell yeah. Also, is. didn't... Uh, Honey, just wait until the last also, fight. Also, Jonathan's God. soul came back and possessed uh, Jotaro, so... You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, you run one Aegir Gardra. It's a new size one. Um, from It was from the last set. Uh, it's 5-1-1. One, one. When it enters the field, discard up to one card from your hand. If you do, search... The one with really long hair looks more like that would be... That would be um, Star Platinum. What's, what's his name? Tabasco and um, Blue Blood? Something. Because he had the same hair as, as Star Platinum. Yeah, kind of. He's got longer hair. And then, like, Star Platinum ends up getting shorter hair in, like, part four or something. Yeah, and kind of skinnier in part six. That's really disappointing. And more pink. Eh. That's just evolution, my friend. <laughs> a stand evolution? Yeah. Oh, wait, we know that that's a thing, because Koichi. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Adria Gardra, when it enters the field, you may discard up to one card from your hand. Yeah. If you do, search yeah. your deck for either a specifically DD Gargantua Dragon or a DDT item and add it to your hand. Well, like, Awesome. Um, you don't want to run more because it really doesn't gain you any, like, real resource. It doesn't... Um, if you already have an item, you don't need to use it. If you already have your Garga, you don't need to use it. Um, so it's really not that useful. But its second skill is awesome. When a Dragot on your field attacks alone, it attacks your opponents... It attacks your opponent and all their monsters... Um, instead so it attacks literally every, it turns your dragod into ozzy dahaka um also a cool thing is that if your opponent has a center monster it attacks them and their center monster so they take the damage however if that card is like let's say raging mode and it has penetrate, then when you destroy their center, they take double the damage. Because they take the attack that they're taking, they take damage from the attack that, that hit them, and then they take the penetrate damage that procced off of hitting their monster. So you're effectively dealing double damage. Awesome. I love this card. Um, it, this deck is super tight, so putting it at two is kind of hard. If you don't like it, you might be able to take out something like Gatling mode and just add another Aegir Gardra. But I feel like one, but I feel like one more isn't going to make a big difference. Um, now for spells, here's an awesome new spell: Combat Deities Radiant Radiant Combat Deities Glory. Uh, just like Gargantua Dragon, it can be used in all worlds. 
Um, its cast cost is to pay one gauge. I should say all flags, but you get the point. You can use it in any deck you want. Um, its cast cost is to pay one gauge. Counter, Jeevo from drop zone. Specifically, pick a DDT monster with Gargantua in its card name from your drop zone and call it on top of a Dragon on your field without paying its call cost. So it's like similar to that, but also it has to have Gargantua in the name. Luckily... Like black All of them do. Blonde. So. Blonde. Eh. <laughs> anyway, the G Evo. This counts as a Jeeva, so it procs any Jeeva well, skills. Anyway, the Jeeva yeah, card gains 5k power and 5k defense for the turn. Unfortunately, this card can only be cast once per turn. Um, still a great card. It's really fun to kind of like pop this on your opponent. And they're like, aha, I know you don't have any modes in your hand. And you're like, no, but I have this. And then you just Jeevo from drop. So that's a cool card. Um, and also, like, if you lose your uh, DD Gargantua Dragon, you just get it back with that. So that's neat. And don't worry, just because that card's in the deck doesn't mean I didn't get rid of Switch Mode, because it's still really good. Um, You're still really good. Thank you. Uh, pay one gauge, counter, G-Evo, call a Dragod on Wait, top hold, of a Dragod. Hold, hold up, before the day ends, it's Wednesday, my dudes. <laughs> He's got a point. I get it, because it's like 44 minutes till midnight. 44? Mista would be angry. Let's kill the hoe. <laughs> oh, God. That's awful. I can't fucking eat cake when there are only four slices. I'm going to fucking die. Um, this is just what lets you G-Evo by casting the spell. You can use it on your opponent's turn. You can use it in response to anything. So if they, like, rest your card, fuck you, Jose, you can just G-Evo over it. Awesome card. It's also not once per turn, unlike um, Radiant Glory. So, good card. You don't want to run more than that because it can just get a little cloggy and like five Jeevo spells that can, five spells that allow you to Jeevo are enough. Uh, now we run this new spicy set spell, Evolution Spirit. Um, so, first off, I just want to point out, you can set as many of this card on the field as you want. That's why it's never really a dead draw. And that's why I also run two instead of one. Um, first off, DDT on your field cannot be bounced by card effects. That's great. Its other ability is even better, arguably. When Once per turn when you G-Evo, you gain two life and one gauge. So just more resources. And if you have two, that's four life and two gauge. Yes, you will probably deck out, which has happened to me before. Almost happened. Go but you go into yeah, exactly. You go into Lost World, or you just win by then. Um, unfortunately, it self it, it can be destroyed, but um, it's just a super useful card. Another use it has is that if this card's set, you can call Garcat, and Garcat's skill goes off because it's a DDT, and Garcat requires a DDT, not a DDT monster. Uh, then we run to Dragon Shine. Um, I hope y'all remember this because it's kind of one of the most important cards in the deck. It's Pay a Life. Really Choose and use one of the following two. You can only use this card once per turn. Either search your deck for a DDT item and add it to hand, so you can grab your Garcrest or your Gargasaber, um, or put up to two differently named DDT from your drop zone back to your hand. Recycling is cool. Um, it also helps the earth. It does, and it helps me d my deck. Me deck. Me deck. Me deck, lad. As we're playing with cardboard. I like how I have these moments where, like, I just alternate between my usual kind of, like, California white guy. And then your um, to, like, pirate themed. My, to, no, no, first off, first off, what's arguably more prominent is my, like, southern, southern, drawl. southern thrall, yeah. Drawl. Drawl, thank you. Um, and, uh, I don't have southern thrall yet. Um, and then... Ultimately, is my like true form, which is actually the uh, the pirate. I got because you're wearing a striped shirt right now. Yeah, actually, I have a Swedish shirt over there, so it's like you know Swedish. They were uh -huh. Vikings. They weren't pirates, but like yeah. they were. They cool. were beta pirates. Ah! You, you do know the the, they, the way they fought they was like shit, bro. Yeah, they fucked up villages that couldn't defend themselves. Isn't they that what you're supposed a to do in those times? Pussies. As soon as they're as gaining soon as resources, one showed up. They would fuck off because they had really shitty weapons. It's how you got resources. They were smart. They were resourceful. Fuck the weak. They were the homeless of uh, that but era. But they gained homes. <laughs> they really did. Hey, look at the homeless in Venice. They're fucking, like, owning that place, man. The, the locals now that moved in after the gentrification happened are scared of them. 
They're gonna overrun. The more Santa, Honestly, though, the more I'm so excited for it because I hate every Jesus. Venetian now. But like the more, the more Santa Monica drives out their homeless. The more, the more the, the, well, that, but also the more Venice is gonna go to shit from the homeless. It's like that one arc in Batman, um, the cult, where it's about the uh, Indian guy in the sewers who's like kidnapping every homeless person, hypnotizing them, and turning them into a military force. I, okay, just keep going. It please. is an incredible arc. You should all read it. I'll give out my DC Universe code in the link below. <laughs> no, no. Here's the thing. Someone has to guess uh, Miles' address, and you'll give the uh, <laughs> yes. DC Universe code to them. Um, then I read two Garakul, a uh, fun little draw spell. It's pay one gang. You, you can only gank. use it if you... Yup. <laughs> Garakul gank gank. That's a trading card for Vanguard. No, it's not. Go, 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 Stop go, go, it with go. your fucking Cray Elementals. Seriously, Richard, you're not gonna make premium. So you can only channel. use this card if you have a DDT on your field. Um, so that matters. Pay one gauge, draw two cards. Then if you have a dragon on your field, you also gain two life. So it's like Sonic mode. Uh, you only run two because it can only be used once per turn. And also, as you saw, the deck draws and digs into deck enough that you don't really need it. Um, you okay, Miles? Yeah, I'm just digesting that pizza. I'm thinking Sounds about- Sounds like you have a piece of sausage stuck in the middle of your throat. Can you suck it for me? No. Richard, can you suck my Adam's apple? No. Please? No. I won't tell Vanessa. <laughs> you want me to call your sister uh, to do it for you? Yes, please. <laughs> Alright. This card's great. Um, Gar Highland. Uh... Ultra Pro, more like... Poultra... Uo. Captain Marvel, more like Captain Carvel. Nexus... Or what are you doing? Nexus core. Oh, I like it. Nexus core more like Richard, Nexus. you are an artist. Did you see my shitty one right here? Yeah, that's why I'm drawing this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gar Highland's great. To cast it, you put a DDT from your drop into um from your field into your drop. Um Counter, choose use the following two. Either gain four gauge or gain four life. This card's fucking lifesaver. You're so welcome. a few things. That's gorgeous. Oh my god. Thank you. Richard, this means so much to me. You're welcome. I, I plan on like filling this mat up with just a bunch of like references and inside jokes. Okay, so Rin made a... Can I sell this for a lot of money Rin when you an, become an famous? Rin made Excel uh, oh, marker for okay, me. Oh, wait, yeah, I kind of want to show it. What the fuck is that thing? Jesus, that's, that's Hard so Rock Draco <laughs> Kid with God. the little face that he always has. With the apathetic face on yeah. it? Yeah. Um, did, didn't that face, like, wasn't that considered to be, like, offensive to liberals or something? Fuck the liberals! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Um, so Gar Hyland, uh, what I love most about it is that while it is your main resource engine for Gage, um... How long has this been? I don't know. 28 look how, minutes. Look how many cards are in his deck? That's not that many. It's like 50, 52. Anyway, moving on. Um, if your opponent's attacking a card in your field and you're like, oh no, it's going to die, yeah. you can just cast this card, okay, remove it, the attack will whiff, and then you'll get gauge. So like, if the card's gonna die, you might as well get something from its death. Um, then... <laughs> you know your deck is just like Alan's uh, Vanguard, Vanguard decks. decks, right? Two ofs? Two yeah. Ofs. Yeah, but it's more consistent because, you know, the deck isn't based on RNG like Vanguard. Also, the cards have a natural, like, cohesiveness together. Okay, okay Alan. Um, we love him, though. Also, if you use this on a card and you have Soul Guard, you Soul Guard the removal, and it's still proc. So, yeah! Uh, then I run three Dragod Var, or more like Dragod Vor. I already uh, made that joke! But yeah. I'm, my video's gonna get more views. I'm playing buddy fuck. People care for buddy Um, It's cast cost is drop a soul from a card on your right field and pay what gauge. Wow. So, so aggressive. Uh, so drop a card from a- drop a card from a- drop a drop soul- a from a <laughs> Drop a soul from a card in your field and pay one gauge. Counter, choose and use on the following two. Either choose a monster on your opponent's field, drop all soul from it and destroy it, or destroy a card in your opponent's field and if it gets destroyed, draw. This card has so much, like, it, it's so good for control, like, for both offense and defense. Love it. Gotta I have, like- I uses it against, uh, 
bloody eyes. Yeah, exactly. Or deadliest Gotta eyes. have two or three. I rent it three because it's just too good. It's also like twenty five dollars. It's expensive, but it's worth it. And then you rent two Gar Down, another very controlly card. Um, so. First off, its cast cost is pay two gauge and two life, so that's kind of a yikes. However, if you have a Dragon on your field with two or more soul, which, as I'm sure you guys know, is pretty easy with this deck, you can cast it for free, which I think is awesome. What this is, is a significantly better loud voice. Um, for just casting this card, you pick three up to three cards on your opponent's field, uh, cards so items count, each of them loses 5k defense, 5k power, and 3 crit. So, like, as if the power nag wasn't enough, um, the really crit, you just nag all their crits, and then you just kind of sit there and don't take just anything. Like, it's great. It just completely, like, deters your opponent from wanting to attack. I love this card. Uh, 3 could get kind of cloggy, but if you're, like, kind of budget, maybe drop a Dragod Var and go for a third um, Gardan. So anyway, then we get to our actual nullifiers. We run two Gar Parry. You can only use this card if you have a DDT on your field, but having an open center or closed center doesn't matter. Nullify the attack and draw. Drawing is cool. Richard drew on my map. It's awesome. Um, then two Fighting Emperor Dragon Shield. Uh, this doesn't require an open center, but however, it does require you have a DDT, and it really doesn't do much unless you have a drag on. Initially, it's just a null. Like, you just nullify the attack if you have a DDT. But if a drag on, you also gain two life and two gauge. Resources are fire. Then we have two DD Dragon Sword Garkris. Uh, to equip it, it's pay a life and a gauge. So it's like, it feels kind of heavy, but you make up for that pretty quickly. Um, if you have a drag on your monster, if you drag on monster on your field, this card and all Dragod on your field gain 4,000 power, their abilities cannot be nullified, and they cannot be destroyed. This card is a wonderful buffer. Um, like, the power, it used to be a lot better when the cards were a little lower in numbers, but that doesn't matter too much anymore. The biggest thing is that they can't be destroyed. This card is great, but the moment you have no Dragod on your field, this card's insanely vulnerable. Um, and we only run two, because you can kind of search it out using Kaiser, but more importantly, we need to make room for Combat Deity Dragon Sword Garga Saber. It's only, it is a 6-2, um, it's only pay one gauge to equip, and its ability is counteract G Evo. Choose a Dragon monster on your field, pay one gauge, then call a Dragon monster from your hand on top of that card without paying call cost, and if you want, add this card equipped from your field into the soul of the card. So, it increases the defense. Um, if you don't need it anymore, might as well get rid of it and help Soul Guard. Um, and most importantly, it's just another G Evo option. I love this card, you don't want to see it too often. The main idea is to go into Kaiser. Um, use Kaiser's ability, that's three attacks with each with four crit, and you go into this, then you're gonna activate this effect, G Evo into another card, do whatever you do with that card, then from the soul, you should have it, go in, go back into D to Gargantua Dragon, and then just continue making your plays. So this card's a wonderful combo extender. Also, you can use it on your opponent's turn. And now we have our impacts. One Gargantua Buster Break. Um, I like this card, but the three gauge has proven more oftentimes than not that it is harder to use. So I normally would, most people like seem to run it at a two of, I preferred it at a one, but it's also kind of like a weeaboo slash aesthetic choice of mine to run the other card that's in here. Um, you may only cast this card if you have a drag out on your field. Uh, its cast cost is to pay three gauge. What it does is it, you gain three life, you draw three cards, then destroy all cards in your opponent's field and burn your opponent one and deal three damage to your opponent. Then end the final phase. So you can't cast multiple cards in your final phase, um, but you kind of use this more so as a way to benefit you a lot and screw over your opponent a lot. Just the three gauge feels heavy. It's like kind of hard to use, but again, it's one of the cards that like doesn't matter too much if you don't see it and only helps if you do. 
the final card that I just have to run, I feel so obligated to do so, is the original Deity Gargantua Dragon. Simple, just the same thing it's always been since BTO one of Buddy Fight, just objectively better. You can only use this card if you have a Dragon on your field. Your opponent's... You and your opponent have an open center, and your opponent's life is five or less. Pay only two gauge, deal five damage to your opponent. This card cannot be nullified, and the damage cannot be reduced. Simple. So that's the main deck. Um, it's very aggressive. Uh, a fun play is to kind of like build up a soul of different drag odds just by all your different Jivo combos, and then by using DD Gargantua's Dragons, DD Gargantua Dragon's ability, again, pay its gauge, pay its call cost to call it from soul, you call it, and because of like occupation rule and or size limit rule, you just remove all of those drag odds, and then you can easily go into raging mode and you meet all the criteria for that um, four crit, three crit, quadruple attack, cannot counter at all. Um, like giant blow. Uh, now for sideboard, we run two Drago Trap. Uh, I used to main deck this card, but it's really not needed anymore because you have Drago Var to control cards that don't have a lot of soul, and you have Gar down to control cards that are very offensive. What it is is it's pay one gauge and two life. The gauge doesn't hurt, but the life has proven more often times than not that it can hurt, especially when like. You're really t you've already really taken a beating. It can be a little hard to use. But anyway, when you cast it, counter, pick a card in your opponent's field. That card cannot attack for the turn. You don't rest it. It doesn't matter if they like can make that card restand or anything like that, or give it another battle phase, anything. That card can't attack. Um, use it against stuff like Max Dragons. Or um, use it against in the mirror match to prevent G Evos, at least from attacking. Although more often times than not, they have another alter they have an alternative. They have a contingency. Um, so yeah, it's just but it's just a really good card all around. Like if a card does triple attack, might want to use it. If the card allows you to like restand itself for more, even more attacks, or you know that there's like a restand spell, use it. But um, right now it does not need to be made. Up. That's kind of unnecessary. Then we run two loyalty. Um, it's a generic spell. It pay one gauge to cast it. Counter choose and use one of the following three. For this turn, the next damage dealt to you is reduced by two. Eh. Um, pick a put a soul put a soul from a monster on your opponent's field into the drop zone. Eh. The third one, awesome. For this turn, your opponent cannot call more than three monsters. This is fantastic for the mirror match because Jivo counts as calling. Um, it's fantastic against Astro Dragons because if they have, like, they just call, like, 20 coups in one turn, so this completely screws over their resource engine, or a big part of it, at least. Um, it's great against LDO because they call a lot, like, they'll do their, like, three Tsumasakis before doing all of their plays, so you can just kind of, like, basically the idea of it is that the moment they call their third card, if you know they're going to call more, you cast this, and that just completely shuts them down. Another thing that really hurts is when you use it against this deck, like, there are times where, you know how I showed you, you'll, like, call the guard dog and then call a guard cat, get the gauge, call the guard cat, get the gauge and draw. Um, I've done that before, and I'm like, cool, I've got resources, and I had plenty of cards to play, but my opponent dropped a loyalty on me, and now I can't do anything. This board is worthless. You can't do anything with these cards when they're just alone. They are to give you resources, nothing more. Also, guard dog isn't even helpful if you can't call your drag odds. So, like, if you know your opponent's using loyalty, focus on calling your drag odds more than you focus on calling your resource engine. Um, so this card's great. Uh, then you run to Chest Break. This is solely for the Max Dragon matchup. I just want to say, if you're playing more locally and playing with friends, and no one's, like, it's more casual, no one's using Lost, um, no one's using Max Dragon, don't bother buying this card. It doesn't seem like there's any other real need for it. The biggest thing about Max Dragon is that they have that spell Overcrest, which is literally what lets the deck function. This skill is choosing you sort of the following two. Um, either, and you really just use it for the first skill, put up to two spells from your opponent's field on the bottom of their deck. 
Overcrest cannot be destroyed, and it cannot be returned to hand, I believe. So, and either way, this deck can't bounce. So, the only other alternative is simply removing it from the field. How do you do that? Oh, Chessbreak returns it to the bottom. So you use this just to remove Chessbreak. The moment Chessbreak's removed, they go over their size limit, their monster gets destroyed, they have a completely empty field. They need to start fresh, and then by then you can just hammer them and kill them. Um, its other one is counter. Oh, the first skill isn't a counter. It has to be on your turn. That's fine. But anyway, counter for this turn, a monster on your opponent's field loses 2k power and a crit. Eh. The biggest thing is it's a solid max rank counter. But again, if you're not planning on competing in big tournaments, or you don't have any, like, max dragons in your locals or your friend group, don't bother getting this card. It's just pointless. It is solely for the max dragon counter, and I love it when I get to use it against them. It is so satisfying. Then I run two buddy block. I was main decking this card in my last deck, but it got a little cloggy, so I only want to move it to the side. And it's really only for stuff like, um... The, the, uh, the uh, mirror match, and stuff that can hit, like, a lot of battles, like Astro Dragon. Um, you know, they just do a lot of restanding, a lot of, like, multiple attacking, just, like, five plus attacks. Uh, it's pay one gauge. Um, also, most of my sideboard is generic. I run one, like, actual world spell. Um card. Uh, pay one gauge, counter, choose and use one of the following two. For this turn, the next damage you take is reduced by three. Hey, it's better than loyalty. Big deal. Um, the other ability is what you actually use it for. Although, I mean, I'm sure you can be in a pinch and cast that instead. But anyway, um, if your opponent's cards attacked four times or more this during this turn, for this turn, you will not take any more battle damage. Or damage from attacks. Uh, that's really good, because here's the thing, it's not like, okay, I take the first attack, okay, I take the second attack, okay, third, okay, I take the fourth, now I cast it. No. The moment your opponent declares the fourth attack, you can cast this, and you won't take damage from that attack. So this shuts down a lot of, like, again, even in the mirror match, if your opponent's method is killing you by, like, you know, ramming you with Jeevo after Jeevo, this card immediately says no to that. Same with Astro Dragons. It's just a really... Easy card to use, really fun. You know, you it, it's just kind of like, it's like another, it just gives you another chance to stay alive. And then to Lost World. Um, I'm not gonna go into depth, it's basically just like you play it at the end of your opponent's turn, it's two gauge to cast, put it on top of your flag, get your Lost deck out. Um, this is for decks like Max Dragon, where you really need to extend it, because let's look at it. Miles, are you still on the same fucking deck profile? Yeah. How long have you been on there? 42 minutes oh and a half. Um, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of content in this deck. Um, so, uh, the, this is basically... Every, most of my sideboard is to counter Max Dragons, and Lost World is like that final contingency to do so. Night episode? Yes. We should buy an ASMR mic. The one that's oh, shaped blue. like a little ear? Yeah. I was gonna say a blue yeti, but that works. There's one that has two ears on it. What you're actually supposed to buy is this little... Um, so, so I run Lost World because why would I not? Um, it's great for those, like, for those games where you really need to push. Um, Max Dragon is a big one. Just use it to kill them. Uh... I'm not going to go into what my Lost Deck is. It's expensive, and that's just kind of something that, like, you should pick up on your own and at your own comfortable pace. So, like, if you don't want to, if you can't afford Lost World, build as budget and as cheap a deck as possible, or don't build it at all and don't worry about Lost World and just sideboard something else, like more loyalties, more chess breaks, more anything. Um, so, yeah, that was my 43 and a half minute deck profile. If it made it this far, comment, um, Rockley's a shit character. It's upset other people. Uh, so, um, if y'all have any suggestions, comment them. Uh, I feel really comfortable with the way Stop this deck playing. is, oh, and I love it a lot. That's Boy. not what the, that's not what the subs want. That's not what the subs who matter want. Um, whose opinions matter? There we go. Um, Get off of Nexus. We want more game. That's hilarious. Who? Uh, so, yeah, I really enjoy this deck. Um, I actually got third at my locals, and I was really proud, because it was super fun tourney, and this Miles, deck's great. I got great. second with Narukami, you're not special. Yeah, you're using Narukami, though. Um, and playing Vanguard. Uh, so, yeah, 
Um, let me know how you liked this and leave a like because that means something. Uh, good night YouTube. Thanks for watching the video. Love you guys.